Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? I can't believe. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Tatia, for the very nice, uh, uh, generous uh, introduction. And I would also like to thank uh, Yuichi, Tatsuya, and Takumi for organizing this uh, super intensive symposium. Uh, it's been wonderfully organized, uh, showing the strengths of Japanese super organizing skills. And all talks are being so inspiring. So uh, congratulations and uh, thank you for having me here. Okay, um, I'm going to, in this talk, in this talk, sorry, uh, I'd like to focus on two things. Uh, first, I will consider the issues of comparative method studies as a research methodology for second language acquisition research. And by looking at these uh, such studies, I will examine whether task-based language teaching is more effective than traditional type of instruction. So this talk is not based on a single study, so it's a bit, bit different from others, uh, other, other talk. Uh, it's based on a review of existing studies to answer these questions. Uh, particularly the first one I'm focusing on today uh, to discuss or tackle the questions as to should we conduct studies comparing TBLT and other instructions. Okay. Comparative method studies seek to determine which of two or more language teaching approaches or method is more effective. In this particular talk, I will focus on studies comparing task-based language teaching and a more traditional approach uh, that is presentation practice and production, so-called PPP. Yeah, so TBLT versus PPP is that kind of the topic. Why do we need to compare the TBLT and PPP? Advocates of both PPP and TBLT have argued the needs for such studies for example, uh, Ron Sheen uh, argued that it's dangerous to propose new approaches such as DBLT uh, without evidence that they result in superior learning to well-established approaches such as PPP. Michael Long, who is one of the most uh, main advocates of TBLT, as you know, also argues that comparative studies are needed. Today, I would like to uh, focus on uh, classroom-based studies rather than laboratory-based uh, ones, because uh, ultimately only studies carried out in classroom will enable our uh, true comparisons of approaches that were designed for the classroom. Okay. However, comparative method studies are notoriously difficult to conduct because controlling various factors is not always easy. In my co-authored book, we suggested six conditions for comparative method studies in order to uh, provide conclusive evidence. Pre-test and the control group are needed to establish that uh, learners takes place in the particular group, not simply the result of a test practice effect or of general exposure to the target language. Observation of process feature is needed to establish internal validity, what's happening uh, within the, uh, the lessons instruction. Uh, the instruction should be carried out by the same teachers so that uh, to exclude, to avoid the, uh, the teacher factors. The tests are not biased in favor of either of the method, one of the method investigated. And ideally too, the study should investigate whether individual learner factors such as language aptitude and mot motivation uh, mediating the effectiveness of each method. So now I will e uh, e uh, evaluate existing comparative studies uh, based on these conditions. Okay. Studies comparing TBLT and another approach can be classified in either program comparisons or focused comparative studies. I will first look at program comparisons. When a program comparison investigated uh, TBLT, TBLT is compared to some pre-existing program because TBLT is considered to be a new one. 
In such uh, research settings, the TBLT constitutes an innovation and is introduced to a teaching context where a more traditional approach has been the norm. Sorry for the small letters, you might want to expand the, the, the screen, maybe not. Uh, when, uh, so I found uh, five such studies okay, conducted in various teaching contexts. As you can see, uh, these studies involve a wide range of participants and treatment durations, relatively long. And these studies investigated general proficiency rather than uh, focusing on specific language features, often using multiple measurements and showing overall favorable results for TBLT. Right. If we look at the research design, however, most of the studies do not meet the conditions I proposed earlier perhaps due to the characteristics of <clears throat> this type of research. Three of them included tests that are in favor of both approaches, which is good, but <clears throat> we don't know whether the effects were actually led by TVLT or the PPP because they didn't have a pretest or the control group. We cannot exclude the possibility that differences were caused by the teacher's skills because different teachers teach in different groups or the students proficiency before participating in the program. And the crucial issue is that none of them investigated the process features or their effects on individual learners. <clears throat> they look at only as a whole. So we don't know whether the students were actually doing uh, what, what actually doing, what students are actually doing while participating in these programs, in these very long programs. In, this, in other words, we don't know what learning processes had resulted in the different levels of learning for the TBLT and PPP program. So for these reasons, these studies cannot provide clear conclusions about the relative effectiveness of TVLT or PPP. <clears throat> okay, let's have a look at other type of comparative studies, method studies, focused comparative studies. Focused comparative studies are often motivated by theoretical hypotheses. Studies comparing TVLT and PPP often aim at investigating two clearly defined construct, focus on form and focus on forms. In focus on form instruction, the, uh, the primary focus on meaning, focuses on meaning, but with attention to form when uh, communicative or you know, linguistic problems arise. And in focus on forms instruction, the instruction explicitly addresses uh, predetermined linguistic forms. Right. Okay. And they usually investigate specific linguistic features by means of both pretest and post test. So now I will introduce two of such studies uh, which were designed very differently. She in 2006 compared the TBLT and PPP. The TBLT group received, you can see here, enjoyable tasks and game, game activities with focus on form opportunities. And the PPP learners received explicit description of two grammatical structures and engaged in controlled practice exercises and opportunity for free production. The instruction lasted seven months. Participants were elementary students uh, learning French. The two, group, uh, two groups are taught by actually different teachers. Actually, the researcher, Shin himself taught the PPP group and another teacher taught the TBLT group. This is why uh, the, the article report the PPP procedures in detail, but not much about uh, TBLT. Three tests were conducted to avoid test bias and the oral, uh, oral production test 
show that advantage of PPP over the TVLT. However, because it is not clear what happened in the TVLT group, such as how often the students were exposed to the target structure or how often they received feedback on them during this long seven month lessons, we cannot see what actually made the different levels learner, learning for these two groups of uh, students, All right? Another example, actually it's my one, investigated young beginner learners in Japan. Okay. Um, this study had three groups. The TBOT group received three input-based tasks and the PPP group received five production-based activities following PPP procedures at one in one lesson and repeated several times. Uh, there was a control group receiving unrelated activities. Participants were first year elementary school students in Japan receiving nine lessons over five weeks. Target vocabulary items were uh, 24 nouns English nouns and 12 English adjectives. They were introduced explicitly for the PPP group. For the TPLT group, nouns were targeted in the input-based tasks, but adjectives were only incidentally occurred in the conversation, utterances in the teachers and so forth. Both discrete point tests in favor of PPP and task-based tests in favor of TPLT group were conducted. The results suggested that for the nouns, uh, both groups performed better than the control group, but there was no difference, significant, significant differences between uh, PPP and the TBLT. Okay. Um, for, but for adjectives, the TBLT group outperformed the PPP group. And I also looked at the process analysis the process features, process analysis suggested that the PPP group produced the target words much more frequently than the TBLT group because they are repeating many times. However, the PPP students produced the adjectives as a part of so-called IRF exchange, the teacher initiating by asking questions, students respond to it, and the teacher provide feedback on it. What's this? Elephant, good, or something like that. So it was totally uh, teacher initiated. Okay. On the other hand, the TBLT group, the production of adjective was entirely uh, student initiated. Uh, they produced uh, adjectives to negotiate the meaning of nouns like blue or brown or big or something like that. So as you can see, by examining what the students actually did while receiving the instruction, the study was able to inform how the external perspectives like TBLT or PVP manifested in actual classroom. So it linked between the external and internal perspectives and whether it led to different levels of learning. Including these two studies, I found maybe there are more, but four uh, focused comparative studies comparing TBLT and PPP. These studies involved relatively smaller cases and shorter treatment durations, investigating specific language features rather than general prophecy. Often included uh, test in favor of both group, but as it's only three or uh, four, although three out of four studies show the superiority of TVLT, we cannot say that they provide conclusive evidence as only limited number of studies explicitly compare the two approaches. If we look at the evidence eva evaluation of design uh, design. These studies did better in their design than program evaluations, as you can see. And looking at the items that each of the st studies didn't meet these conditions, uh, you can see that 
weakness of the study. For example, uh, she in 2006 did not have a control group and did not control teacher factor. He also did not uh, examine whether focus on form, the theoretical uh, assumptions, uh, actually occurred in the TBLT lessons. So we cannot exclude the possibilities that these factors contributed the relative effectiveness of these two types of instruction rather than difference between the two types of instruction. Okay. So then how can we ensure that comparative method studies are well designed? One way is to go local. Local method comparisons involve relatively short periods of instruction and focus on specific linguistic features. Global method comparisons, on the other hand, uh, involve long period of instruction and assessing general language proficiency or achievement. We have seen that more conclusive studies were focused method comparisons that made uh, every effort to control various uh, factors. When a study includes an ex examination of process features, the results are clearly more convincing and more informative, right? So go local, control factors, guard against test bias, include a control group and more the, and the most importantly, examine the process features. But we still have problems. As the ultimate goal of comparative method study is to provide practical advice to teachers, we also need to know whether TBLT can be superior in developing learners' overall proficiency in a real world educational program. However, as we have seen, program comparisons tend to have methodological problems due to the nature of such studies because they tend to or need to uh, prioritize ecological validity over predictive validity. Implementing approaches inevitably involves a variety of factors that can uh, potentially affect learning. So controlling all so uh, all potential factors are not realistic for this kind of study. So this is really a fundamental issue. Another perhaps more fundamental issue is that generalizability of the evidence. We have seen that neither TBLT or PPP constitutes a monolithic approach. All studies operationalize TBLT or PPP in a very different way. What, we, what all these studies show is that the particular version of TBLT led to superior outcomes than the particular versions of PPP. So the studies might have compared a very good TBLT and very bad PPP. This makes us wonder about investigating the effects of method which is only an external construct because a method can be implemented various ways. TBLT or PPP can be implemented very different way. So it is difficult to generalize the findings to make uh, claims that the superiority of one type of instruction. It's time. Arguably, Overcoming these issues can be achieved through carefully designed descriptive program evaluations. Such evaluations focus more narrowly on the instructional, instructional processes and often elicit the subjective evaluations of the participants, participants themselves. By doing so, uh, they may help our understanding of how different versions of TVLT result in different classroom processes. Then the study could also include proposed measurements in to investigate the relative effectiveness on general proficiency as a result of what happened 
in the program. So to conclude, as Kumarava Develu <laughs> puts it, for language pedagogy to be relevant, it must be sensitive to a particular group of teachers, teaching a particular group of learners, pursuing a particular set of goals within a particular in, uh, institutional context, embedded in a particular social cultural milieu. We need to develop understanding of how different manifestations of TVLT result in different classroom processes and how these processes affect the learning that take place. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>